Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Hensions. I'm um, recording from my basement here. <laughs> uh, I don't know, so I changed up the location a little bit. But uh, yeah, so this will be our um, Kamen Rider Revice review for episode one. I'm super, super pumped this is out. Um, I think it was Izu Subs or one of the other subbing groups that got it done pretty quick and decent too. Like they did a great job with it. Um, I'm pretty sure going forward that the big ones like TV Nihon and like um, Overtime I don't think are going to be doing Revice. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I know that Izu is. But anyway... So, this is going to be the review of episode one, um, and also pretty soon I'll try and do another Toku Toy View once I get my revised driver. Um, I got the uh, version of it that comes with the driver, the T-Rex stamp, but then also the Grasshopper stamp, and the book that's like the Henshin Belt book thing, so I'll talk about those things as soon as I get them, clearly. Um, let's jump into revise. So, um, this was a fantastic premiere episode. I, I really, really enjoyed it, honestly. I think this is honestly one of my favorite premiere episodes in a while. Um, and some can be, can kind of be hit or miss a little bit. Sabres was okay, but I felt like was a little oddly paced or whatever. Um, Zero Ones was great, and so was Geo's and Build um, and X Aid. Um, Ghost is pretty good too. But this was a really, really fun premiere episode. I like how we started with the 50th anniversary new logo thing. And it kind of like does like a riff on the Marvel thing where like Marvel Studios starts up and it's like dun, 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 and it shows all the footage of the movies, you know. This was this, it was that, but it was in within the logo was footage of all the main writers doing attacks and stuff like that. So I thought that was really, really cool to see. Um, but we get a lot of really good backstory and like world building in this. Starts in the 70s. These uh, group of scientists kind of gave me Kuga vibes a little bit um, when they found the, uh, uh, what are they called? The... Oh, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember the name of them. The bad guys in that. The, like, demon things in that. Anyway, so these researchers find the first stamp and, of course, use it. And it creates a monster and blah, blah, blah. And so we find there's this place called this the Phoenix Foundation. And they have taken it and found out that through research that every person has a demon living within them in their heart. And that um, if someone is able to contract with this demon, that they'll become more powerful and they can, you know, take control of the demon and what, what have you. So um, we're introduced to them as kind of like this other science group right now, which may eventually be villains. We don't know yet. Um, we have uh, George um, Kanzaki, Karazaki, something like that, who's the uh, like Kamen Rider fanboy and also creates all the tech. Like he created the driver and I think worked on the stamps and stuff like that too. Um, and uh, there's like this lead guy. I can't remember his name, but he's there and decent. I, George has a much more fun personality being a Kamen Rider fanboy and just goofy in general. Uh, Toy, please let him transform at some point, even if it's a dream sequence. Anyway, um, and we're also introduced to the Igarashi family. They own a bathhouse. In Japan, bathhouses are a big deal. You come in, it's like a big hot tub type of thing, basically, sort of like that. I don't know if you take like a real bath in it, but it's 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 just there's a lot of bathhouses in Japan. It's just kind of a thing they do. So the Igarashi family <clears throat> is known for their bathhouses or whatever. Um, the father of the family is like kind of a YouTuber sort of, and he's like super duper in love with the mom and wants to like show her off and everything. It's super cute. Uh, she seems to be more level headed and kind of the like head of the family sort of kind of, um, there's the younger sister Sakura, who's a martial arts, um, instructor and like pretty well, like good at it herself and can defend herself pretty well. I'm thinking she's going to become a writer at some point. Um, and then the younger brother Daiji Igarashi, who works at Phoenix and is, um, being chosen to be the first person to wear the revised driver. Keep that in mind. And then we have Iki. Iki um, is the older brother, and he um, was uh, at one point a soccer star, which keep that in mind as well, because I'll talk about it in a little bit, and gave it up, he says, to just work on the family stuff, like become part of the family business. I think there's something more there. Maybe he injured himself or actually injured someone else. There's something else going on there, I think, more than just giving up and doing the family business thing. It seemed like an odd choice. Um, but throughout this, when we're being introduced to the family, he keeps meeting up with Vice, the devil inside of him. Nobody else can see it, though. When Vice isn't transformed, nobody can see Vice or hear him. Only Iki can. So it makes him look like a psychopath when he's doing shit. He's, like, trying to stop Vice from knocking stuff over and eating food and everything. And people are just like, what are you doing? <laughs> so it led to some really nice comedy bits that I think worked pretty well. Completely different from how Vice was written in that Saber final episode thing. That was weird. I, I'm guessing that they must just had Saber's writers work on that and they had no clue what the hell to do with Vice. So they just made him do fart jokes for some reason because there's none of that here. He's slapsticking. He's comedic. 
but not in the same goofy, irritating-ish way that he was in that episode. Like, I didn't mind it that much, but I understand how it could have been irritating. Um, so we're introduced there to the, to the main characters there. We also get introduced to the villain group, the Dead Man. Um, Dead Man, Dead Man's. And they're kind of um, Mexican, like Dia de los Muertos themed, which I really like. Um, it's odd to see that show up in a in a cent in a cent in a writer show and in a Japanese show, a Japanese drama show. But it it works pretty well, honestly, and it doesn't feel too culturally appropriating. Um, I, I follow a few people on Twitter that are of Hispanic origin um, and you know ethnicity and all that, and they, and they they're fans of Toku and they don't seem to have a problem with it. So. I think it's okay. Like, I feel like it's not, like, patronizing or, like, you know, racist in any way, honestly. Um, we have Aguilera, who's the... I always knew Christina Aguilera was a bad girl. Aguilera, who's the main <clears throat> lead girl villain. Um, girl boss ended up, like, you know, um, who wants to resurrect from this statue um, GIF. It looks like GIF, like a GIF. Like, you find a GIF online. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that was intentional or not. It was kind of funny. But <laughs> anyway, that's her plan is to use the stamps to release the demons and people and like that power being able to bring her back her master, which I don't know how I feel about already setting up the female character being controlled by another villain, you know, especially because she seems to be the primary big bad bad guy. Um, then there's Julio who has like a mariachi hat on and like his like rib cage on his like shirt thing and he's really cool looking. I like him a lot. And one other one, too, and I can't remember his name. I should have looked that up before recording this review. <laughs> but anyway, um, <coughs> as villains, they're threatening right from the start. They talk about right away wanting to, you know, eradicate humanity and go after humanity and, you know, bring out the devils and people and blah, blah, blah. And they actually have this big, like, rave party thing. And she goes through the crowd and she's just, like, stamping everybody there and creates the um, foot soldiers for the series. I don't know if they were given a name just yet, but they're really cool looking. These, like, bones and just, ah, they're, they're cool. A lot of really interesting, creepy, like, spooky design things in this, in this series. I really like it so far. Um, so move the plot forward, um, and the whole Egarashi family is going with Daiji for his coronation, not coronation, like graduation sort of, to becoming a higher up officer at Phoenix and being able to be the one that's going to be given the Phoenix, uh, the, the revice driver. Um, so George is talking about it, blah, blah, blah. Actually, the lead guy is, and then George takes her, the microphone for him and is talking about it at the ceremony. Oh, this is the revice driver, and it'll allow you, you know, we'll fight devils by controlling them, and blah, blah, blah. And Daiji, you know, Igarashi Daiji is the one that we've chosen to be our first, you know, person to use it and uh during this the dead man's attack the the ceremony and like uh the, the the whole place phoenix foundation and um they uh you know they're stamping people making them into the you know the um henchmen uh and the main guy the main like leader of phoenix tries to put the driver on himself it does it it works and george warns him hey if you use a stamp it's probably going to bring on a demon i don't know if you're the one that's going to connect with the driver the right way he doesn't listen to him presses the little T-Rex button, goes to use it. It shocks him on the driver. It flies back and stamps him instead and brings out, of course, a demon, which is really cool, the, like, effect for this because it brings out, like, they talk about contracting with a demon or the devil, um, like a deal with the devil type thing, and it brings out a piece of paper that looks like a contract, and then it origami, like, forms into the monster who also looks origami designed, too, which I thought is really cool. I really like that design aesthetic. I think it blends well with everything, and I like that it's a nice connection to paper, for the contract becoming the monster um so it's attacking and rampaging and everything and while it's happening um Iki is you know Iki is trying to keep his family safe that's his main goal right now and so da uh i think daiji tries to put it on as well and also gets too scared and Iki takes it from him because he sees that he's too scared and he wants to help protect the family he puts it on and before this we see vice actually trying to eat his mom for some reason even though he really can't because he's got an ethereal form um like a ghost-like form, you know? And so he puts on the driver, he presses the button, you know, presses a little stamp. I found out that, at least in Japan, it's a thing that when they used to have stamps there a lot more, they would blow on them um, to, like, get the ink to moisten up so that it would be a better stamp. And that's why he goes, and then stamps. So he stamps, pulls off, and then, you know, well, he doesn't do the full pose here, but then puts it back on and pulls it to the side and it transforms to get the first henshin. And it's cool because behind him we see this little, as he's transforming, this little like text conversation between him and Vice. And um, cause it pulls Vice back into him when he goes to put the belt on cause it transforms both of them. And it's, it, to somebody translated it as basically being like, hey, what are you doing? I was trying to help you. No, you weren't. You were trying to eat my mom. And like, it's just a really funny, like back and forth, goofy ass conversation behind them. I really like it. It's, it's unnecessary, but 
So is most of things in Rider, because it's such an extra series like Sentai is. Um, but anyway, so we get our first henshin, and first look at them transformed. Um, Kamen Rider Revy, which is Icky, and Kamen Rider Vice, which is, of course, Vice. And he seems to have an aesthetic Vice of getting, like, basically, like, kind of like a hoodie thing over him, like a little, you know, jacket thing goes over his face and kind of is uh, stylized after whatever stamp they're using. So this one is the T-Rex, of course. Um, Revy looks amazing. I love the pink and, like, bluish black, like, aesthetic with their color scheme. It works really well. It looks really nice. Um, and I've been with it from the start. From as soon as they revealed what they looked like and anything from Superhero Sankey or any videos that have come out about it, I've been, like, pumped about the design right away. Um, so we get him, um, fighting in there for a little bit and then they go outside. And what's cool is... You know, it's been a while that we've seen riders actually fight hand-to-hand. -hand. We just had a whole series of just swordsman riders. So seeing him fight hand-to-hand -hand is cool. And what's cool, remember I mentioned that he's a soccer player. So he uses a lot of kicks in his fighting. I like that attention to detail. I really enjoy when Ryder does this. They say who a character is and some part of who they are influences the way they fight or transform or something. And I really, really like that. So because he's a... a, a, a um, retired soccer player he uses a lot of kicks in the fight there's actually one where he like kicks the dude the, the one of the henchmen in the head and like smacks against the wall and like breaks part of the wall and the guy's like right this falls over i was like damn it was a nice kick um he also activates this ability that gives him t-rex legs because we had to have a random cg part apparently of every rider uh Heisei or Rewa rider like you know first episode for, i don't know why it was goofy it was fine i just i was like did we need to do that? <laughs> um, and Vice is doing his thing very, like, he's fighting a lot differently. So he's a lot more animalistic and kind of aggressive with his fighting. And I like that as well. And they, they do well together. They actually fight decently well together. And I like that he, like, begrudgingly is working with, they're, they're begrudgingly working with each other. Like, Iki does not like Vice because of him trying to eat his mom and just general being an ass. And Vice is really just using him right now as a way to, like, get more powerful and, you know, eat and stuff like that. And so, and have a physical body when they transform. So I like that aesthetic that he doesn't have a physical body until um, Iki transforms and then they both get their forms. So I like that. And I like how it's like both of them getting like something designed off of whatever the stamp is. This one being, of course, the T-Rex stamp. They do, I think they used the Megalodon one. I'm pretty sure. Maybe they didn't, but I'm pretty sure that they did. Um, and we get our, our rider kick together and he destroys the monster. Um, it seems like in this, they're going to have to actually physically take the stamps to be able to use them. It's not like a thing where they defeat the monster, it throws out the stamp, and then they get it. They're going to have to steal them away from the dead mans. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. And it was a pretty good premiere. At the end of it, he ends up giving the driver back to George and is like, I don't want it. I just wanted to protect my family, blah, blah, blah. And clearly that's not going to happen. He's going to get it back. Um, so I liked that. And I liked that... Uh, uh, when he was first transforming that George is like telling him like, you know, put on the driver stamp and then henshin. And he does like the, like, you know, Ichigo like stance. Cause he's a huge rider fan. I also like that at first translations tried to say that he was going to be that riders in this universe were TV shows. And that's why he's such a fan of it. And then he's creating his first rider based off of that sort of, but it seems to be that they kind of a go kaiju thing where they all have existed in the same universe or something like that. Because he talks about them pretty, like, it, it just makes it clear that it's not a TV show type situation. So, um, I really like that, honestly. That that doesn't bother me. I think that's really cool. Um, and there's later where he's, like, telling them how to use it. He's, like, like trying to how to use the stamp. Um, and they also have the Oheen Buster, which is, like, this axe slash gun thing that he can use, which is really cool. Um, <coughs> another thing I liked was, uh, excuse me was uh, Vice doing the, like, fourth wall breaks. He was when he, like, randomly be like, did you see how cool that was? What do you guys think? And Revy actually, uh, like, uh, Iki slash Revy actually responds to him. He's like, who are you talking to? Stop it. Like, get back to the fight. <laughs> so, um, as far as Ryder premieres go and Ryder first episodes, I loved it. I think it was really good. I think they have a nice dynamic. Um, and I think I really like the setup of everything. The, the villain group right away is threatening. Um, and I like their kind of aesthetic, you know, the whole mariachi, uh, Dia de los Muertos, Mexican, Latin themed situation. Um, and I really enjoy the visuals. I like the henshin sequence. The suit is really nice. The monster suits are great. I love the aesthetic of the contract becoming paper and becoming origami to make the monster. Um, so it'd be a really interesting scene going forward. I have a lot of, a lot of answers to stuff now that we've seen the first episode and also questions about how certain things work. Um, they also kind of, they, they kind of have like a... I would say, to me, what makes sense in my head is the, the, the not the aesthetic, 
how their relationship works is kind of like a mix between Ankh and Ag, and also um, uh, who else is I thinking of? Another right, kind of like a, a, a way of doing Ankh, Ankh and Ag a little bit, but it also has elements of sort of like what doubled up with and things like that. So I really liked it. I thought it was a really great premiere. Um, <clears throat> if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a solid nine out of ten. Um, just because I wish that um. I wish the episode was longer, clearly, which isn't anything wrong with the episode. And um, I wish there was a little bit more, just a tiny bit more in the villains and a bit more on Vice before he becomes a thing. Um, but overall, I really liked the premiere episode and I thought they did a fantastic job with it. So definitely a solid 9. Probably, I'd give it a, probably a solid 9.5 out of 10. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the episode. Um, and... Uh, how you guys felt about the suits and everything. Again, I do know that Vice's voice actor is a piece of trash, and I think I'm going to do the best I can to separate out the performance and the character himself and liking it, if, he, if I do end up liking him, from the actions of the awful the awful voice actor who is garbage and apparently thinks it's cool to be racist, which it's not, not at all. So, anyway, let me guys know, know what you guys think in the comments of the episode. Do you think it was great? Did you not like it? Did you think it was mid? Whatever. Um, thank you guys for sharing, liking, and watching and all of that. And until next time, I'm Hooked on Hensions. You stay hooked on Hensions. We'll talk to you later. Finger guns. Ba-boom, ba-ba-boom-boom. Ba -boom, ba -boom. I love the jingle. Oh, my God. One second. I love the jingle. The whole, come on, rip, 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 rex. Come on, rip, 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 rex. Body up. The little, like, heartbeat thing. Oh, so cool. I love it. Anyway, so bye-bye. Talk to you guys later.